Hi, let's look at an example of a naive base classifier implemented in Python. Before we do that, let's look at our data. Here we have a text file with uh, tab separated columns, as you can see here. The first one has the labels for the data. So some documents are neg for negative and some are pause for positive. And all of these are movie reviews. Out of those negative and positive documents, we have, again, in the zeroth element, the label, whether it's negative or positive, one. And in the element number two, we have the actual text of the review. So there's a negative review that says, plot, two teen couples go to a church party, drink, and then drive. They get into an accident. Let's look at a positive one. So there's about 120 negative reviews, and there's another 120 positive reviews. The first positive review says, films adapted from comic books have had plenty of success. So 120 positive reviews, 120 negative reviews with their label from the sets, from the all of the data, and the text of the review. Here we have the code. So we are going to have a function here that is going to return unigrams and bigrams from the text and is going to return to us the 200 most uh, frequent bigrams for text. We'll take a look at it in a minute. The first thing the um, code is going to do is to open the text file, mini movie reviews, and read its text into the into file lines, which is going to be just a list of the lines. Then it's going to split each of the lines into uh, with the tabulations because they're divided by tabs, and look at the zeroth column at the very first element. If it contains the letters neg because it's a negative review, then we get the element number two, which was the text, and appended to negative movie reviews. This is just the text of the negative reviews. If we get POS, or positive, in the zeroth element, then we take the second element, which is the text of the review, and put it in the positive reviews. This is an example. Let's print the positive reviews. Here we have Anaconda. As you can see, that is just going to give you a list with the text of all of the movies that are reviewed as positive. So it's just a list of strings. Next, we want to get the features that describe each of the reviews. So we want to get some sort of vector that has uh, the presence or absence of n-grams, unigrams, bigrams. And we're going to put them here in negative features and positive features. So for each of our positive reviews, we're going to first tokenize them. Let's see what this looks like. We're, let's extract the tokens from the positive reviews. And as you can see, it's just all of those tokens right there. Uh, hard, strings, and of course, the kids, or the and so on. After you have the tokens, we're going to send this to our ngram generating function. So the list of tokens, the complete list, is going to be sent here. And this is going to return to us a dictionary containing um, just a big vector of the n-grams in each of the reviews. Let's see. Those are for the positive ones. So for each of the 120 positive reviews, we're getting a list with the features in that belong, I'm sorry, with the n-grams belonging to that document. And so those are going to be the features.
As you can see, this is returned as a type of Python dictionary. So for example, we have the structure of mouth, and it is true that this structure exists. We have the, um, the bigram was pleasantly, and it is true that this bigram exists. And um, here are the unigrams. So we have the unigram lack, and it is true that the unigram exists. So we get a list of these for each of our documents, for each of our movie reviews. And then we add the tag positive to each of them. Let me show you what that would look like. I wonder if this will run. Mm -hmm. So for every document, we're going to get a list of all of its n-grams. So this will be our n-gram vector that contains the features. For example, it has the bigram you have, it has the bigram because it, it has the bigram it sound. This is a huge vector for each of the documents, and we're going to append an element to indicate whether that vector belongs to a positive document or to a negative document. In this case, we're looking at the positive ones, so it's just the list of n-grams and positive, indicating that it belonged to a positive document. And we're going to append all of that into a big list called positive feet, feats, which contains, um, what is it? Yes, um, uh, a big uh, list of many dictionaries for the features and then additional element for whether it's positive or negative. We can look at the ones for the negatives, for example. It's, yes, it's a big list. That's a long list. Oh, it's because it's doing it for each one of them as it grows. Let me just kill it. And why don't we print it outside of the four? Thank you. There we go. Thank you, computer. No, you only need to print it once. Um, as you can see, this negative features is a list of the fee of all of the documents a vector of features for every document, and with and the la label negative, and then another one, the features for the second negative document, label negative, the features for the third negative document, negative, the features for the fourth <laughs> negative document, negative. This is what neck feats contains. The next thing we'll do is establish a cutoff point so that we can get 90% of the positive features for training and 10% of the positive features for uh, testing. And we're going to do the same with the negatives. So we're going to get the integer of 90% of the length of negative features, which is just a list of documents. And we're going to get 90% of the length of positive features, which is a list with the vectors for each of the documents. So because they both have the same size, 120, there's 108 documents, is 90% of the documents that they contain. So we're going to make two new lists. Train feats is going to contain the first 90% of the negative documents, so the vectors for each of the negative documents, plus the first 90% of the vectors for the positive documents. And this is going to be contained in trained features. Likewise, test features is going to contain the last 10%, so from 90% to the end of the negative features, and from 90% to the end, so 10% 
of the positive features, so the positive documents, or the vectors for the positive documents. Let's print the smaller one and uncomment this one. So you get the bigrams, you uh, split the sets, and here you can see that I uh, printed test features. We have um, a list of features for the last document there on the screen, and then a label, the positive label. And one thing that we couldn't see because it was hidden by this one is that we have a little message that we're training on 90% uh, training features. It's going to say 108, um, 216 because it's 108 plus 108. And then we're training on 24 test documents because it's 12 test positive and 12 test negative. Let's erase these. <coughs> Here, we're going to have an object called classifier that is a naive base classifier. And we're going to train it on our train feeds list, which is just the vectors for each of the training documents, of the 216 training documents. But a naive space classifier is a function within NLTK, as you can see here. So we're going to make a classifier object, which we're going to use later. Next, we're going to create two dictionaries that are going to contain the labels of the test set. So gold labels is going to contain the labels that we actually have in our test set. So on those 24 documents. And predicted labels is going to contain the classifier's predictions for each of those documents. So here we have uh, the object test feeds, which is the list, of, the list of vectors with the features of each document. We're going to split it into the vector with the features and the label, positive or negative. So for each document, we split uh, its um, item in, in the test list into the vector with features and the label. And we uh, take the label and put it in gold labels. So this is the actual label that we uh, have in our testing set. Let's look at it real quick. Mm -hmm. It's training, it's making the classifier. Okay, and um, as you can see, it's telling you which documents are negative and which documents are positive. And these are the ones that we have in our um, testing set. So these are the correct ones. And precisely, they are in order because the negative ones came first and the positive ones came second. Now, what's going to happen next? We're going to use the classifier object to classify a set of features, a vector containing features the presence of unigrams or bigrams, we're going to get it from the test set and then we're going to run it through the classifier and then we're going to get an observed prediction and we're going to put that prediction in the, uh, in the dictionary predicted labels. So let's print them side by side. training. Uh, there we go. So as you can see, the computer made a few mistakes. Uh, here are the actual labels from the testing set. Some of them are negative and some of them are positive. And here is which documents were predicted to be negative by the model and which documents were predicted to be positive by the model. And we can already see that it had a few problems. For example, number one 
is negative, but the computer predicted it to be positive. So here we get uh, the original labels, and then we use the classifier to actually predict the, uh, the vector in the testing features, and then compare them. How do we compare them? Using these measurements. So precision and recall are two functions from NLTK. As you can see, NLTK metrics. We also have uh, the F-score there. We can calculate the precision for the positive items by sending all of the items labeled as positive versus all the items predicted as positive. We can calculate the recall by also sending all of the items labeled as positive and all of the items predicted as positive and see how they match. As we can see, as you can see, we can get the precision and recall for positive, pre uh, precision and recall for negative, and the F score for the negative and positive sets. Let's see them all. Also, we're going to get the accuracy, also from NLTK, by sending the classifier object and the vectors from the testing set. Now that we can print that, let's run it again. training and testing. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the program had about 71% accuracy. It had 72% precision, 73% precision, and 67% recall for the positives. Um, and it had 69% precision for the negatives and 75% recall for the negatives. So as you can see, recall is the ones that were actually negative that it managed to classify as negative. So out of all the ones that were actually negative, it saw 75% of them. Precision is the ones that it called negative, but only 69% of the ones that, were, that the computer classified as negative were actually negative. That's the precision of the recall and the F measure or F score, which is a combination of the precision and the recall. So as you can see, it's performing not excellent, but it's I mean 72 and 72 and 70 are not terrible measurements for classification. Finally, I want to show you this function of the classifier: show most informative features. This is very useful. It's going to tell us which of the features was more important when classifying something as positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So we have here our measurements for accuracy, precision, recall, the F-scores, and we have informative features. For example, the, uh, the existence of the feature mess made a document more negative than positive. As a matter of fact, it's 13 times more likely to be negative than to be positive if it has the feature mess. This is what these means. These are a likelihood ratio. So mess makes a document is uh, a document is 13 times more likely to be negative if it has the word mess. A document is 10.6 times more likely to be negative if it has the word worst. A document is seven times more likely to be positive if it has the word the bigram supportive cast. A document is um, seven times more likely to be positive if it has the unigram, the word appreciate. And that's what this does. And as you can see here, you can, um, gosh, is this how you manipulate this one? Let me see, I cannot remember. If it's just 50 or n equal 50, we'll see in a minute. Oh yeah, n equals 50. So you can set an arbitrary number of features that you want to detect as more or less important. So with 50, for example, we get a lot more information. Um, someone is 
is five times more likely to be negative it have, if it has the word lane. Something is um, 4.3 times more likely to be positive it have, if it has the word individual and so forth. So this is an example of a naive base classifier. It can take a set of text, for example, movie reviews. It extracts features from it, which can be unigrams or bigrams or any type of n-gram really, or any type of feature that you define. So once you get the vectors with the features, you uh, tag each of them with a positive or negative tag. You give that to the classifier. And before you give that to the classifier, you split it into training and testing. You give the training set to the classifier, and then you can measure how well it did with the testing set. You can get recall, uh, precision, F-scores, and the most informative features.